So I've featured D1 Milano here on the channel a number of times. They make integrated bracelet sports watches that are inspired by the holy trinity of integrated bracelet watches. Of course, we're talking about the AP Royal Oak, the Vacheron Overseas, and the Patek Philippe Nautilus. So integrated bracelet watches, sometimes they have an automatic movement, sometimes they are quartz. I've featured both on my channel before. Now this is a new automatic sort of sports dress watch that is upgraded. So it's an upgraded version of their automatic and it comes in the exact same packaging, outer cardboard box, inner cardboard box as well. Uh, just signed D1 Milano, has a little bit of a texturing. It's signed on the inside. You get a watch, of course, and you get information on the watch and warranty information right here in a little envelope. That's it, very simple packaging. And here is the watch, you can see it is a blue dial version of the watch. Um, and their cases take a lot of inspiration from those three watches that I mentioned, but specifically one, and I would say that is the AP Royal Oak. And you can see that in this watch. It gets that blue dial. It sort of gets the baton indices. Uh, those are applied. You also get sort of baton hands, and it looks like they are loomed. However, they are not loomed. They are actually uh, just sort of a, a little bit of a contrasting finish in the center of those hands. Unfortunately, I wish it was loomed because I think that would be really nice on this watch. It's a 41 millimeter watch. Let's do some measurements really quickly. I've measured it a few times and one of the measurements is really great. It's 41 millimeters basically. Um, and then you get a lug to lug, which is really nice on here as well. It's around 52 millimeters, somewhere around there. Uh, 51.8 and then it's a little bit smaller if you're measuring at the actual lugs themselves it's around 59 I think it was 59 and a half something like that it would be a little bit smaller if it was on a bracelet because you do have male end links but it's not that bad and the actual male end link does not protrude very far so it doesn't wear huge um, the crown is on the smaller side it's a little bit fidgety because it is smaller uh, 5.6 millimeters and it's a little bit bigger if you measure it um, because it is a square, if you measure it on the corners, it's like 5.8, 5.9, somewhere around there. But it's the thickness that really is good on this watch. And as I said, this is an upgraded version of their automatic. And you can see 10 millimeters thick, basically spot on 10 millimeters thick. That is including the sapphire crystal on the front and the sapphire crystal on the back of the watch. And I'll show you this close up because you do get a Miyota 9000 series in this watch. Now this is the first time that they've used a Miyota 9000 series in their automatic watches I believe. Uh, previous versions that I've reviewed on my channel have had an NH35 therefore they were a lot thicker and you could not see that NH35 from the back on the one that I reviewed uh, so it was around 15 and a half or 16 millimeters thick. 10 millimeters thick is amazing for a sports dress watch that's really good that's where you want to be and you do get a screwed in case back you do get a screwed in crown you only get 50 meters of water resistance though so um it's not really that sporty i wouldn't call it that sporty but it does have 50 meters of water resistance you do get that screwed in crown which is a little bit of added protection but not much uh because there must not be gaskets in there however 50 meters is what you get um and it has that distinct D1 Milano look and I've said this about a lot of micro brands and micro independent brands out there all of their watches have sort of a DNA language to them um, they all get this bezel which has alternating polish and brushed features to it and a little bit of bead blasting on the side um, it looks like a D1 Milano when you see it although obviously like I said from the case profile a lot of inspiration a lot of that is taken from obviously the AP Royal Oak because it is an homage to the AP Royal Oak and, and you could definitely see that in the case itself. The bezel is sort of a combination between all three watches. I would say there's a little bit of AP Royal Oak, there's a little bit of overseas and maybe a little bit more of a helping of the actual Nautilus in the bezel portion area here. Uh, the bracelet is sort of a combination of all three as well. It's sort of an H-link bracelet. Uh, and I've seen this on other watches as well. However, uh, not many watches get this right. And you can see there is fluidity to this bracelet. It's very nicely finished. You have chamfered edge uh, on each portion of the link. So it's not just on the sides of the link. 
Um, they actually did a pretty good job. It's actually chamfered on the inside of each one of the links of the H and then on the inside of each one of the links on the center. Um, so they've done a really good job of, of actually finishing the bracelet. It feels really good and there is fluidity to it. Now, I've reviewed plenty of integrated bracelet watches on my channel, a lot of those from micro brands. And a lot of times when you're doing this, it will get stuck in a position and you won't be able to move it. And this watch does not do that. You never see that here. And it actually is really good. It does taper very, very well as well. Uh, I think I measured around 27 millimeters up here by the lugs and then all the way down to around 17 and a half or something like that at the actual buckle. Now the buckle itself has sort of a plaque here. It just says D1 Milano. It is a double sort of enclosure, which either you love or you hate. A lot of people do not like these. I don't mind it. And it works. The uh, plaque is part of the last uh, link. So you do need to, when you're closing it, you have to close one side and then the other. Uh, unfortunately, that's how they've designed this. Again, it is a dress watch. Um, and some people really like that. Some people won't. I don't mind it. The only thing that I have a problem with on this watch is the size of the crown. I wish it was larger. I find that uh, to be the case with a lot of integrated bracelet watches. Unfortunately, that's what they do. It is a Miyota 9015. So it's not a bad movement to look at. You do get a date because it's a 9015. Uh, there it is at three o'clock. It sort of takes up a little bit of that three o'clock indice. Uh, and it also has a black background. So it's not a blue background. It's a black background. The dial on here is a beautiful blue sunburst dial. It just says Automatico there. D1 Milano at the top. Nothing else. So it's not a cluttered dial at all. Uh, and then you have really nice faceted uh, applied indices, just a double baton indice at the 12 o'clock, give you a little bit of orientation. Um, and that is it. Uh, really a, a beautiful execution of a very, very nicely made watch. Now the price on here is $745. Now what I think they're trying to do here is target brands like Tissot and a number of other brands that have come out with integrated bracelet watches. Now the Tissot is $650. I'm gonna do a direct comparison to this watch because I think this watch has a lot of similarities to that Tissot. However, there are some differences, there are benefits with this watch, and there are negatives with this watch when compared to the Tissot and vice versa. So I will do a video comparing the two. Um, I do like the blue dial on here a lot as well. I think it's really, very, very nice, very well executed. Very quickly, I'm gonna throw it on my wrist and then we will wrap up the uh, video. But quickly, let me show you what I have on my wrist today. Uh, today, I have on my Victorinox Inox. This is the titanium version in quartz. Um, just a really rugged uh, uh, watch that I really love. I really love the blue strap on here. It's not the most comfortable watch that you'll ever own. It is around 43 millimeters, I wanna say. Uh, and it is thick for quartz watch, as you can see, um, which is kind of crazy. But it's it's just a good looking watch. It has this really protected crown. It's a, a very good everyday watch. And it's a great watch uh, for, you know, if you're looking for like sort of a replacement for the, uh, the G-Shock, I think. Uh, and I've said that a couple of times. I think it really does work well. You can hear that buckle is really, really solid. Works very nicely. And there it is. Um, no loom shot today because we don't have loom on this watch. Uh, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. It's a 41 millimeter watch. It's around a 50 millimeter uh, lug to lug. Uh, if you're including that male end length of around 52 millimeters, so somewhere in that neighborhood, 10 millimeters thick. And that's why it wears so nice on the wrist. You can see it just sits down very close to the wrist. Because you have that Miyota movement in there, the Miyota 9015, which is a very good looking movement especially considering the price that these watches come in at. I think it's actually pretty nice. Uh, but again, 745, there is a lot of competition out there. Usually you can get discounts at D1 Milano. Um, so I'm going to figure out those discounts and then we'll do a comparison based off of the specs and price to a Tissot PRX, because I think that is a very good um, sort of alternative to the AP Royal Oak, as well as these watches from D1 Milano. I think it would be a very good comparison. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below of this watch. What do you think of the look of it? Please also don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Be, please, please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.